cancer doesn't discriminate. Every other one of us will be diagnosed with the disease in our lifetime. Cancer kills 10 million people every single year, every three seconds. So cancer is fast. Developing a new cancer medicine is not. The fundamental paradigm of developing new medicines hasn't really changed much in the past. It still takes about 10 years to find a new medicine, but we are at the beginning of what will be a big change. I'm in London today to meet a colleague from Quantum Black, McKinsey's Artificial Intelligence Group, and the goal for the two of us today is to understand whether we can help our biopharmaceutical clients optimize clinical trials through the use of analytical methods and artificial intelligence. Historically, everything starts on a lab bench. Cancer simply means the uncontrolled division and growth of cells. That's how tumors develop. Scientists can study cell division in the lab in a petri dish. Scientists can then add chemicals and other substances to these dividing cells to see if they can stop them from growing. 90% of clinical drug candidates fail during testing. And so what that means is to get to that one out of 10, our clients need to spend nearly 3 billion US dollars. I've always loved science. I've always found it extremely elegant, actually the way you need to test, prove, disprove hypotheses. My parents were actually both doctors. As a doctor, you have the potential to help people. And as a scientist, you can help thousands, millions of people. And that just really energized me. I joined McKinsey about 10 years ago, and there was a palpable excitement in the air about AI. We were already applying these methods and actually making a difference. Normally, clinical trials are run in the following way. Eligible patients get split into two groups. One group receives the current standard of care. The other group receives the possible new medicine. This group is the control arm. This group is the experimental arm. During the trial, neither the patients nor the physicians know what they receive or what they administer. And this is to avoid bias. Only after the trial is the data put back together so that it can be analyzed. One of the biggest opportunities for AI in discovering and developing medicines is actually this concept of designing a clinical trial. Today, every possible trial design has to be tested in real time. That can take months, years. By using these models at every single point of trial design and trial execution, it would in theory be possible to get a medicine to patients twice as quickly and in one third lower cost. Those cancers with the most number of patients are usually also the ones on the forefront of research. And that includes what we call the big four, lung cancer, breast cancer, colorectal cancer, and prostate cancer. But it also includes some of the harder to treat cancers, brain cancer, pancreatic cancer, for example. So far, artificial intelligence has only been able to be applied to part of the process. So what's really exciting is the possibility of simulating all of the inputs and also outcomes of a clinical trial before the first patient is actually dosed. It's a trial on a chip, if you will. When we work on using these kind of models with our pharmaceutical clients, we need a real blend of deep medical scientific expertise on the one hand and very deep technical and data expertise on the other. If you're going to run this model a thousand times, you need to get the same answer a thousand times. Make no mistake, data is often difficult to work with. The cost of getting the wrong answer is significant. We need to build models that account for potential biases in the data, potential biases in the output, and make extremely sure that there's high confidence in the output. If it does all come together, this really has the potential to mean that people get treated much more quickly and effectively across a really wide variety of cancers, and ultimately help get the right drug to the right patient at the right time. The whole community is really rallying behind this concept to explore these approaches where they can be used in an ethical, responsible and appropriate way to maximize the impact for patients. There's a huge amount that can be done before a patient even gets treated. How do you prevent cancer from ever happening? How do we diagnose it earlier? In the end, the goal of all of this is about patients. 
It's about patients receiving better care, receiving better medicines, and spending more time with their families, and hopefully us all being able to rewrite cancer.